In this video, I'll be talking about why shockwaves are so important and how they affect the performance of a rocket engine. I will also be explaining the concepts of an over-expanded nozzle and an under-expanded nozzle in more detail. Stay tuned for this video as it will contain a lot of information about compressible flows and how complex shockwaves can be. Let's get started. Just to recap, a rocket engine consists of a converging section and a diverging section. When the engine starts, the flow in the nozzle remains subsonic until it gets to a point where in the midsection the Mach number equals 1 or it reaches sonic speed. At this point, the flow in the diverging section will accelerate because in supersonic compressible flows, the velocity is directly proportional to the area. Let's first talk about overexpansion because initially the pressure inside is a lot lower than the pressure outside. What happens now is that you will have a normal shockwave forming just downstream of the nozzle midsection and the flow will also detach. As you increase this exit pressure or if you decrease the outside pressure, the normal shock will move towards the tip of the nozzle. So then what? <laughs> The flow is actually trying to reach pressure equilibrium. So you will have two oblique shock waves that form on each side of the nozzle exit. These increase the pressure because that's what shock waves do. And they will make the pressure equal to the back pressure. But now we have another problem. The gas changes direction and it cannot cross the center line because that will violate the law of thermodynamics. So what happens now is that you will have two more oblique shocks that form at the intersection point of the first shock waves. These are new shock waves, they are not a reflection. These shock waves will increase the pressure even more and it will now get to a point where it exceeds the pressure outside. You also need to understand this region called the slip line. It is a line connecting the shocks at the edge and is referred to as a shear layer. Static pressure across the slip line stays constant, but the velocity can change. Since the fuel and the flow is losing energy as it's leaving the nozzle, the second shock waves are a bit weaker than the first. So now we have a new problem. <laughs> the flow has gone inside two shock waves. The pressure exceeds the back pressure. So what's going to happen now? The flow is still the flow is still trying to achieve equilibrium, right? So it'll go inside an expansion fan. This expansion fan is also called the prandtl mayer expansion fan. You will also have multiple expansion fans that form since the flow has to be turned in small steps. It cannot be just turned with one fan because that also breaks the law of physics. The fans meet at one point and they are also not parallel. They will meet at the center line and get reflected. The slip line angle will change and it'll angle downward. So when the flow passes inside this expansion fan, it'll once again decrease in pressure. But now it'll be lower than the back pressure. So what do you think happens now? It is still trying to achieve equilibrium. You will have two more oblique shocks that form again. But this time, since the flow has been already compressed multiple times and expanded, it is losing energy. And as a result, these shocks will not be as strong as the first two. So you see how this pattern keeps repeating itself until the flow will dissipate via mixing and the slip line will get weaker and you will have the flow coming to an end essentially. You can see also that the regions of high pressure, so the places where the pressure exceeds the back pressure, these are the regions where you can see the so-called shock diamonds. And you can see in these pictures here what the shock diamonds look like. They're also called Mach diamonds. So you guys can see how in over expansion the flow is very complicated. You will have a lot of shock waves and expansion fans. And the function of these is to just try and maintain equilibrium or to get the pressure equaling the back pressure. This is why I keep telling you guys that nozzle sizing and the method of characteristics are very important. And I have many videos on my channel which talk about these in detail. We can use these same principles to explain what happens when the nozzle is under expanded. This is when the pressure at the exit exceeds the pressure outside and you will most likely achieve this at a high altitude. And as a result, 
you will first have two sets of expansion waves that form. Also, the slip line is at a bigger angle. This is why you see in the Falcon Heavy or the Falcon 9 launch videos of SpaceX that as the rocket climbs higher and higher, the fan gets bigger and bigger. It is essentially becoming underexpanded. Even in the space shuttle, you see the exact same phenomenon. So once again, you will have a similar pattern, but this time it's just the opposite. You will have low pressure and then high pressure regions occurring. Oblique shocks will form after the expansion waves and the pressure will equalize along with the flow changing direction. It's a similar phenomenon that happens again. You will have also two more oblique shocks that form after the first two. The pressure will exceed the back pressure again due to these oblique shocks and then more expansion will expansion waves will form until dissipation and mixing. It is generally preferred to have an underexpanded nozzle than an overexpanded nozzle. This is because you will not have a normal shock inside, which can cause a lot of losses in performance. And also expansion waves are not as bad as oblique shocks because they don't create as much drag force. You can also see in this picture that under-expanded nozzles produce a much higher specific impulse than over-expanded nozzles. So impulse is a ratio of the force divided by how much fuel is leaving the rocket engine every single second. This is also known in engineering as the mass flow rate and the units are kilogram per second or pounds per second. So in conclusion, it is very important to understand shock waves and how they affect the performance of a rocket engine nozzle. Also, they do have an impact on the overall aerodynamic performance of the vehicle. The method of characteristics as I've covered before lets you calculate the best length of this nozzle to accommodate for these expansion characteristics. It is very important to know that if the nozzle is too short, it is at a much higher risk of under expansion. If it is too long, it is at a much higher risk of over expansion. So that's it for the video guys and I hope you guys enjoyed it. So guys, after watching that video, I hope you now have a complete understanding of rocket propulsion and why the rocket nozzle looks the way it does and how the flow behaves during takeoff of a rocket. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and if you're new to my channel, my name is Vin or Vinayak. I make videos on rocket propulsion, MATLAB, Simulink, anything related to aerospace engineering because that is my passion and my field of study. My goal is to just spread this knowledge around the world and I hope a lot of people find my channel at some point in the future. With that being said, I'll be making more content as I go into my master's degree this fall. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.